Hey guys, it's Greg from Big Goblin again, and today is the big day. I finally have all the parts that I need to build my new NAS to store my video project files on, and I just wanted to take you all through the process of me actually building it and then setting it up with Unraid as the OS. This should be a fun one, so go grab a drink, put your feet up, and let's get to it. Ah, I'm just so excited, can't you tell? Ah. <laughs> you smell that? It smells like a bit goblin. All right, since I don't really have a set that I can, uh, you know, have everything splayed out on and kind of go over everything, I'm going to do this on my phone camera, so hopefully this comes out uh, well enough. So the first thing I want to do is kind of go over all the parts. There have been a couple changes um, that I want to go over first. Um, but so the, the base of the platform, as you probably know from, from uh, a previous video of mine, I have the AMD Athlon 3000G processor, which should be more than enough that, to run the Unraid OS, since I'm not really doing anything else beyond just, you know, uh, serving files from it. I have 16 gigs of uh, Corsair Vengeance LPX DDR4 uh, RAM at uh, 3200 megahertz. Again, nothing fancy, but good enough. So the motherboard that I actually spec'd out in my how to plan a PC build video, um, I, I was kind of stupid and missed the sale on that. And the, the price for that board was a, a little bit more than I wanted to spend on it. So I went ahead and looked around a little bit and I found this one for a little bit more. I think it was five or $10 more than I originally spec'd. But it still has all the specs that I need. You know, it supports AM4 processors, has four RAM slots. So if I need more RAM, I can, you know, upgrade it later. And it still has three PCI Express slots, which will be good for, you know, having 10 gig networking and up to two uh, SAT expansion cards. Uh, moving on, so I still have the power supply, the Seasonic GM500 80 plus gold power supply. These are the three four terabyte WD Red Plus drives. This is the WD Blue 500 gigabyte NVMe SSD. That does it for all the main components. I do have this flash drive here, it's a SanDisk. Oh, I guess this was my Ubuntu flash drive for a while. Oop, that's a 32 gig. Sorry about that. Uh, same model drive, this one's just a 16 gig. You really don't need that big of a flash drive, so I'm just going with this 16 gig one. May as well save the 32 for something else. But Unraid boots off of a flash drive, so I have this uh, cheap one that I've had for quite a while now and hopefully it doesn't die too quickly. Before we get to these two things, because I didn't mention these in that uh, how to plan a PC build video, I'll talk about them in a sec. But the last part is the case I have over there on the floor. It's just kind of big, doesn't fit on my desk. So getting back to these cards over here. So these are two PCI Express like expansion cards. Um, this first one right here, it's like an LSI 9208 something mini SAS to SATA card. Basically it just plugs into a PCI Express by four, or I guess by eight slots, sorry. And it gives you two mini SAS ports that you can break out into um, four SATA ports each. Now that I think of it, I'm not sure where my um, breakout cables are. I'll have to find those in a sec. And this card right here is a Mellanox Connect X3, uh, I believe. Yes, Connect X3. Basically, all it is is a SFP Plus 10 gigabit uh, networking card. And that'll just be so I can get faster networking. Now, I know since I'm using hard drives to store all the video files on, it's not going to be anywhere near to 10 gigabit speeds. But I figured having this in there kind of gives me future proofness if I do uh, end up adding more hard drives or get a free NAS and, you know, have like a much more per performant build. So if you haven't noticed the pattern for all these parts, it's really nothing special overall. It's really just whatever parts I could find that were good enough and I could find on sale for good enough deals. Yeah, that's all I have to say for that. Let's uh, get to the build. All right, first up is going to be the, uh, like, I guess, core of the platform with the processor, motherboard, RAM, and of course I got thermal paste. As for the heatsink, I'm not sure if I want to go, go with the stock one that's included with the Athlon processor or, like, one of the cheaper ones I have in storage over there. I might just go with this for now, and then if I need to, then I'll just upgrade the cooler or something. Oh my God, no way is that you, as I'm taken by surprise. Nothing could prepare me for the way that you should end this death stare right on through me. So before I apply the thermal paste, I kind of want to take a look at the cooler. Uh, to see, <laughs> just kind of how crappy this thing was. And man, this is a little bit crappier than I was expecting, honestly. Oh, what a beautiful day, yeah. Are we gonna burn up free sunshine into the Okay, now that the core platform is done, I'm going to move on over to the case and get that prep for the power supply and stuff. Uh, this isn't quite that important. It's more of a fun little fact thing. 
But uh, I opened this power supply, um, I opened the box to get, get the power supply out, and uh, it's a very strong chemical spell. My door was closed, there might be some problems right now, but uh, yeah, um, fun stuff. It uh, turns out I'm a, I'm a bit of a scrub. That whole video last week that, that I did on this case, I went through like pretty much everything I could think of, completely spaced on this little uh, top cover thing, uh, which would allow a little bit more airflow to come out of the case or go into it, depending on how you want to do your airflow. <sighs> so, so I'm gonna pop that top off, put this on, and yeah, cool stuff. I forgot to mention that I found my SAS to SATA breakout cables a little while ago. They actually fell behind my cabinet in my storage area. So I pulled that out, picked them up, and let's get these plugged in. Okay, so here's something annoying. The motherboard here needs a BIOS update for the HPA to actually work. Otherwise, it would just boot and get this like black screen with the blinking cursor. <sighs> so I'm updating the BIOS and hopefully that works. Well, the BIOS flash finished and uh, we, we got to this screen because the flash drive is currently not in, in there for Unraid. <sighs> so let's go ahead and plug the HPA in and see what happens. Hey, look at that. Th th this looks promising. The Avago Technologies, uh, I guess, BIOS screen or like splash loading screen, whatever you want to call it. Cool, that's our three or four terabyte drives detected. And looks like we're booting. Actually, th this should fail to boot because I forgot to plug in the Unraid USB. Yep, cool. All right, that's a good sign though. All right, the server finally booted and now we're into Unraid. Uh, we first get met with this little welcome screen where we're being asked to either purchase a license key or get a trial one. I'm gonna go trial right now because I'm not sure if I wanna use Unraid versus FreeNAS. I'll figure that out later. Let's go ahead and click start trial. And then now we need to set up the array. So we're just gonna go for the parity device as the first WD Red Plus drive, and then disk one and two will be the other two WD Red drives. After that, we need to scroll down and click add pool. And we're just gonna call this cache. This is going to be our SSD write cache. Just click add. Now that that's done, we just need to go back down and then select the WD Blue drive in the SSD cache pool. Hmm, what's this? Oh, the flash device says public share. That's weird. I'll take a look at that later though. For now, let's go ahead and click start the array, hit click proceed, and boom, the array should be good to go. Now that the array is started, well, we are getting some disk errors, but I'll take a look at that in a little bit. For now, we need to go down to the bottom, uh, check this little yes, I want to do this box for formatting, and then click on the format button. What this will do is it'll erase the disks and apply a new file system for all the disks on the array. And this is something that has to be done before the disks can be mounted. But this is going to take a while. So in the meantime, let's go ahead and create our file shares. So let's go up to the shares tab and then add share. For the share name, we're going to just call it BitGoblin and then the comment BitGoblin video share. Easy enough. For use cache pool, we're going to go cache yes. There are a few different options here. Um, the best that I can tell from my use case is going to be just cache yes. But cache prefer might be another option if you really need the performance of the SSD over the hard drives. Then for allocation method, we're gonna go with most free. What this is going to do is as files are added, it's for the most part going to spread out what drive the files are on. So we can kind of take advantage of both drives performance when reading files. The other options are good. So we're just gonna click done. So I just went to the dashboard really quick to change the server name and description. So the server name is going to be Coruscant to match my server naming scheme, which is just the Star Wars planets. And the description is just going to be BitGoblin Video Storage, you know, simple enough. 
All right, so it's a few days later now, and in the last few days, I've done a ton of troubleshooting to figure out what's been giving me all of those disk errors, and it actually turns out to be a couple of reasons. The first one actually being the LSI HPA. Now, what led me to this was all three disks were giving me uh, UDMA CRC errors, and while it is technically possible that all three disks could have been bad, it seemed a lot more likely to me that something like the breakout cable or the port or the HPA itself was an issue. So I tried swapping out to the other port on the HBA, no dice. I tried swapping out the breakout cable, no dice. And then I finally tried pulling out the HBA entirely and then directly connecting all three drives to my motherboard. Now, thankfully that stopped all of the UDMA CRC errors, which, you know, good step forward. But after that, the second problem reared its ugly head where one of the drives, actually it's the drive that I selected to be the parity device, ended up having a bunch of errors when trying to read data off the drive. And for that one, I even tried swapping out SATA cables or trying different ports on the motherboard, but again, they were all showing the same error. So it seems like that drive is the issue. Now I've got the RMA set up and confirmed with WD, so eventually that drive will be replaced. Though I will kind of mention here that WD's RMA process isn't exactly intuitive. There was a bunch of forums and a bunch of different ways I had to add the device and add an address, and it really wasn't a nice experience, so... Yeah, I kind of have to give WD a knock for that one. But at least I did get the RMA confirmed, and it will hopefully be resolved somewhat shortly. And I guess this is a good example still of drive mortality rates. Even if you do test it on day one like I did, there's still a good chance that in the first few months or so of usage that a drive will die. And it probably goes without saying at this point that I haven't moved my video files over since the Ray is in an unprotected state without the parity drive but I have moved my collection of ISO files over since those really aren't really critical and I can have a use for the array in the meantime while I wait for the replacement drive. All right, so that's going to do it for this video. I've gone on long enough about the setup of the system and while it's not quite ready yet, it should be once I get the replacement drive in from WD. I had a lot of fun doing this build since I've never really worked in like a NAS ready case before and I learned some new things about using Unraid, HPA compatibility with motherboards and BIOSes, and as I mentioned a moment ago, it did reaffirm to me that it's important to double check your hardware when it's going in something critical like a NAS or a server. I hope you all enjoyed the video, and if you dislike the video, then you know what to do. But if you did like it, then go hit that like button, and also get subscribed and hit the bell icon so you can keep up with my latest videos and show your support. I've also got a Discord server if you'd like to join the community and just chat and hang out with us. And if you need it, there are several channels to get help. I hope you all have a great day, and I will catch you in the next one.